Hi guys this is quite a long video and a lot of it is just tweaking parameters. No need to watch the whole thing. Project building is not an exact science, but hopefully seeing it in action encourages you to get out there and make some cool stuff. Anyway hope you enjoy and get into game dev. Hi, how's it going? So, we're going to start programming our project and um, it can be a little bit intimidating. There is quite a lot to do. So what I've done here is I've implemented a really kind of bare bones, like all of the basic, really obvious features that were in the planning session. For instance, we have the sentient component. Uh, initialization has been done. However, um, the update functions and, and those sorts of things, we haven't done them yet. Um, for our scene, we have the bare bones parameters, spawn rates and things, but um, the update functions, player movement, all of that, ah, we don't need that, do we? Get rid of that. Because the player is just going to be moving left to right, um, so we don't need that function. Um, yeah, was, I basically took the last video, video in this Python series up to this point and just stripped it back. Um, yeah, this is very, very very, very bare bones. We don't really need to say much about the shaders. We'll just look at them once and then that's it. So for the vertex shader, we're just doing model view projection on a position and that's it. We're not doing any texturing stuff. We're just passing that position through. Then for the fragment shader, well, we don't even need to do much for the color. We're just going to take the color in as a uniform and apply that. Okay, fair enough. So, like I said, there's a lot of things to do. I'm probably going to record this video over a number of sessions and kind of splice it together. Um, let's take just take it one step at a time. The first thing we need to do is choose a palette. Now, I've just got this color hunt website. I'm just going to go through that and pick a palette that looks nice. So we're going for a kind of vaporwave theme. So I'd like some blues and um, maybe some kind of neon looking colors. This looks something like that, I guess. Mm. Mm. Yeah, maybe something like this. Let's grab this one. It really doesn't matter. Okay, so I am going to store all of this. Uh, what do we have? Okay. I wonder if this color has a name. No, it doesn't. Ugh. Okay. So I'm going to store all of this in a in a dictionary. I go down to. My graphics engine. Yeah, we'll put it in the engine. Okay. So we'll say um, self palette, if I can spell. So like I said, this is a dictionary. So we'll go dark blue. Oh, that's a good idea. That actually came with the, um, oops. <laughs> actually came with the color names. Yep. Hmm. Let me just double check that. Navy, purple, pink, teal. Navy, purple, pink, teal. Yep, yep, uh, close enough. Okay, that looks good. Now we can use this, for instance, um, in setting the clear color for the screen. By default, it's black. Let's change it to um, navy. And this is a little bit dodgy. 
because the um, arguments here are a bit different the way it's working. So we'll just be accessing the, the fields here. Okay, so that's the palette set. We can remove that from the to-do list. It's so one item down. Let's just test. Of course, it's not gonna work out of the box, but it would be nice to know what's going wrong. Okay, so line 228. Of course, our player does not have a forwards up or right vector or any of that because we can bake that in we're going to have a fixed camera things are going to be moving around that so we go to 228 okay let's set our eye okay now the target we're going to be looking along um let me see. Yeah, why not? We'll go along in the positive x-axis. So we'll be looking that way. And our up vector is just going to be like z. Positive z is the up vector. Okay. Good. So that's awesome. We have got our basic uh, blue background. So yes, I'm happy with the palette. Okay. Now... The next thing we need is we need to draw a mountain. Okay. So for that, I've got this models file, uh, mountains.object. Just open this in Blender. And I'll just quickly, because my graphics card is so um, cutting edge, it um, sometimes crashes the computer every time I open Blender. So I'll just do this super quickly. And hurrah, it did not crash. Okay. So we'll just go, let's import it and have a look at this. Yeah, mountains. Go with that. Okay, so it's a little dodgy just because um, Blender sometimes has different system so it's around the x we'll go 90 does that there we go i don't know what was happening there okay so just delete that and yeah this is our our model kind of our thing so i guess just depending on how this looks, we've got two options. Either we could have this as like the background kind of angled like this so that it fills up our screen and our player will be going side to side. Or if it looks better, we could even put the player kind of, let's just go. We could even kind of put the player inside here and have them dodging around. But um, yeah, we'll just see how that looks. So. Yeah, don't save, that's fine. So let's load that model. Okay. That is looking good. So um, by the way, in my mesh, I created a stripped down version of the model loader, which just loads the positions. It doesn't um, load any of the uh, texture coordinates or normals or any of that. So it's just very, very bare bones. Okay. So now we go to the render pass and we need to draw that. So we've passed this in. Go. Okay, 
let's have a think about this. Um, I guess we'll go with Let me just double check that. So the mesh, its variable is um, VAO and vertex count with an underscore. Good thing I checked. Okay, so uh, let's just load that in and see what that looks like. Should look like nothing, pretty much. Uh, yep, and the reason for that is that we have not set the model location. That's okay, so um, let's go. transform equals first of all let's just go with no transform at all okay so now we're at least loading something and uh, yeah, there is definitely something. So let's move it. And um, let's see. So I guess maybe we want to change this a little bit. Let's change it so that the camera is maybe two units above the ground. Looking at that point, two units above the ground. Yep, uh, fair enough. Now let's change it so that the um, model transform is uh, shifting the, the mountain back away from us. Okay, so when I made this, this was a width of 24 in each dimension. I mean, maybe we want it to be close enough to the camera that um, it spreads off on each side. So we'll go a half of that. We'll take it 12 units away from us in the X. Um, but otherwise, those dimensions are fine. Okay. So something seems a little funky here. Let's try some rotation. Let's try 45 degrees. So we're just going to experiment here. That's looking better. Okay, yeah. Ah, I get caught up sometimes with the difference between um, NumPy, kind of like NumPy um, operations and uh, GLM order. Ah, that's perfect. That's pretty good. Now let's see if we can, yeah, we might want to tweak that a little bit, but it looks okay. Let's see if we can move back a little bit. So maybe we'll go to a distance of 20. Mm. Let's go even further back. Not an exact science. It's reasonable. It's pretty good, I guess. Uh, hmm. <laughs> Umming and ahhing. Let's go too far and see what that looks like. And it could even probably go. That's pretty good, but um, we're now 
out of range, so I guess we'll um, We may have to adjust those parameters later. Uh, I changed my mind again. That doesn't that doesn't, doesn't look very good. <laughs> um, let's go. Let's just go twelve for now. Yeah. Okay. Fine. 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 Whatever. Whatever, that's, that's okay. Mm. Okay, um, that is reasonable, I'll say. We can always tweak it as much as we want, but um, it basically works. We've got the mountain. Okay. Now the floor grid. Okay, so to do the floor grid, we could, of course, simply loop and draw a whole bunch of lines. However, each draw call has a small overhead. And so to deal with that, I'm actually going to create a kind of custom class to represent my grid. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to um, basically generate a grid. This is a series of lines. So the first, um, let's say the, let's say the I, I guess traditionally I would go for the Y. Oh, yeah, doesn't matter, X or Y. Okay, uh, I guess it's X here. Okay, fair enough, fair enough. It's gonna be a square grid anyway. So um, we want a line that goes from a given X point at y equals zero up to y equals maximum. Z is going to be zero the whole way because it's going to be in the ground. So to have a length of size, we need to go from zero to size minus one. Okay, so now we'll do exactly the same thing, but just with um, the y. So we'll go the other way. Why am I blanking on this? <laughs> it's J there. Okay. And then we'll go through exactly the same stuff as before. So I'll just grab the mesh. So this is basically generating the vertices. We've done that at this point. So we can go grab everything else the same as before. and we'll use the same destroy function. So of course we could have inherited here or in fact even done it all within the same class. That would work just the same. However, I wanna do it this way. So fair enough. All right, so we've generated that. Now we'll go to engine. And we want this to be um, a size of 24. Okay, yep, so we still are going to go with the teal color. Why not? Um, uh, we'll leave the rotation for now. I don't know if we need it. Let's send this to... Um, well, let's do nothing to it right now and just see what that looks like. Okay, let's see what that looks like. All right, uh, it doesn't look too bad. I think we just need to shift things along a little bit. So probably it's centered around us. We wanna shift it 12 units 
at least 12 units to the right in the X. So we'll do that. Uh, sorry, I think I mean, we'll try 12 units in the Y. Ah, wrong way. Yeah, that's looking good. Um, doesn't seem to quite match with the mountain. Well, that seems to match a little bit better. Maybe we should pull it, push it down a little bit. See, it's not an exact science. How many times am I going to say that in this video? Yeah, no, nah, it's too far. Uh, it's pretty good. It's pretty good. I th think this is a little... Actually... That's pretty good. I'm happy with that. Okay. So now let's experiment again with uh, pulling the camera back because now hopefully pulling the camera back won't look quite so awkward. Ah, but it does. We can see on the right, it's a little bit off. Okay. Of course, what am I thinking? When I created this in Blender, it was a size of a scale of 24, which means it actually went 24 in each dimension which means we should actually be 48. Okay, let me try that. So we'll shift this back to zero. And we'll push this be 48 back. Create the grid with a size of 48. Yeah, that's not too bad. That's not too bad. Now let's experiment with bringing the mountain a little bit closer until it kind of is working properly. Do I wonder if this is a A far plane thing. Uh, wouldn't hurt. Yeah, no, still same issue. So it's not a far plane issue. We don't need to mess with the projection transform. I'm just tweaking things. Okay, so. Okay, yep, I'm happy with that. For the mountains, that's good. Now let's just fix up the ground. Yeah, it's pretty good. That's pretty good. Okay, cool. So at this point, uh, we basically have our scenery. Good. It's been a good session. Um, I'm going to take a break now and, uh, well, you won't notice anything. I'll be back in a moment. Okay, so now let's work on the player. First thing we're going to do is load in the player object. Um, then we're going to deal with controls. I guess we're going to set things up to shoot, but we're not going to worry about shooting just yet. Um, update the player so the player moves and stuff. Um, and yeah animate the players, like cause a drop, create a drop animation. So to start with, if we go to the models folder, we have, where is it? I think we're gonna, I think this is rocket. Yeah, we're gonna load rocket.object. Yeah, rocket.object, okay, that's good. And I'm just going to update the player.
So on the scene, when we create the player, I think we want to create the player, maybe a few units in front of the camera at a height just below the camera. We'll try that for now. Okay, now let's just get this thing rendering. So mountains, ground, now we'll do the player. Just gonna make make another color on the fly. I'm gonna call this orange. I'm just gonna flip these around. There we go. For the moment, I'll switch this to the identity transform just to see what things look like. And I'm gonna go rocket mesh. And just see what that looks like. Hmm. <laughs> uh, okay, fair enough. Now let's uh, put it in position. And see what that does. Okay, that's something. Mm, okay, so I want to render the player as a solid thing. So I'll go GL triangles. There. Okay. So it's a bit hard to see uh, what we're actually doing here. So I'm going to just throw the player model out in front of us and see what that looks like. Mm. Okay, I think I see what's happening. I think we need to spin it. Yeah, okay, yep. So it's out in front of us, but we need to kind of spin it around a little bit. So. Yeah, that should work. Or we'll just go back the other way. Yeah, perfect. Okay, so now the player is, yep. We have that. I'm just gonna scale the player down a little bit. So I think I should be make it one tenth scale. Okay, <laughs> it's too much. reasonable okay so now we can pull this back put it in position so it seems to be a little bit behind the camera we could always shift the camera back
That's pretty good. That's pretty good. Now let's uh, maybe drop the player down a little bit. Yeah, why not? Okay, cool. So we are drawing the player. That is awesome. Definitely working. Okay, now the player controls movement and shooting. So what we'll do is what do we have that will be happening from the app because that's the bit that takes um, controls. And that will happen in the handle keys function. And just to double check, the scene has functions to move the player and I'll make a shoot function too. Mm, actually, I'll leave that. I'll leave that to the sentient component. I'll give that a shoot function. Okay. So, what do we want? Um, for starters, I want um, left, right, and then space to shoot. So it's left to right to move left and right, space to shoot, and that's simply all we're going to have. So we'll have, um, we'll check for, um, the left key. And if that's happening, then we'll go and the change in position will go. Let's see what this is. I think it's negative one on the Y. Maybe one on the Y. Whoops, we'll play around with this. Um, and zero. So we'll try that. Okay, so we'll be moving the player like left or right based on this. Um, again, so the convention is positive X axis is forwards away from the player. So the Y axis will be to the left or right of the player. Okay, then what we wanna do is check for space. Um, yeah, if that's happening, then we shoot, fair enough. So what we'll do for the sentient component is we will, where did that go? We'll give them a function to shoot. And all we'll do is we'll say, if we can shoot, we'll just print it for now. So we shoot. And let's say we want to wait some unit of time. It doesn't matter at all. Okay, so. I just realized something. This self-reloading is completely pointless because the information can be encapsulated already within the can shoot and reload time. So we'll get rid of that. Okay. Um, great. Okay. So now let's do this. Uh, 
Okay. Now let's do this move player sort of thing. And we'll say, um, okay, so we're gonna increment it by the um, position and then what do we want? want uh, okay, so let's go with um, maximum of zero. So we want it between. Um, what was it? We had a size of 48. So we'll go between 47 and zero. Of course, not all of this will be on screen and that's kind of what we'll be testing. Um, okay. Yeah, let's just try that. So if we go left, oh, what's going on here? Um, Yeah, right. What are we doing? And there's another thing we missed. Calculate frame rate. Uh, right. So we're going to go... So this will just be to get things kind of moving frame rate independently. Oh. Okay. Let's try that. Okay, so left. Yep. But we go off screen. So then right. We're kind of stuck. That's weird. So let's change this. Let's go between... Um, negative 24 and 24 and then we'll just keep updating that and see what works best oh yeah of course <laughs> wrong way around okay okay it's too much so we'll have that Yeah, still too much. That's pretty good. Yeah, we don't want to constrain the player too much. As a matter of fact, I think let's pull the camera back a little bit more and that'll be a good range. Oh yeah, I just hit space and it shot, but it can't shoot again. Okay. Uh, what was that sound? Who knows? Okay, I think that's pretty good. Okay, right. So, movement and shooting. It's kind of working. Let me just go. I think we should really be setting self velocity. Yeah, okay, I'm going to change this. Scrolling up and down like a crazy person. Okay, so I'm going to change this and put that in a kind of update function. So we'll go. Okay, and then we'll go 
Where were we? Let's do this. We'll go um, set the velocity to that. Okay. So then when we update, I'm um, going to see how that looks. So what I'm doing here is I want to kind of track the movement in a variable because I also want to use that to kind of roll the player as they move. Which we'll see. <laughs> we'll see what that looks like. Um, but yeah. Okay, so Let's try to incorporate that role. So I'll go right down to the render pass. And for the player, we will rotate them. And this will be rotation around the X axis. And as I write this, I realize that I should, well, a few things. Okay, let me check that. We should, no, that's good. I think that's good. But it's up here, this should be is zero and then we'll constrain the Eulers as well. Go between 45 and negative 45. course it's not going to do anything I'm not updating so we'll give the scene an update function and go and then we'll check that the app is telling the scene to update yep that's fine Give that a shot. Okay. Interesting. <laughs> uh. Uh. <laughs> okay. Okay, got it. I'll say um, if Okay, so we'll have some um, code if things, like if the player is moving, otherwise, uh, if the player is not moving, otherwise this is a code that will display. And what I really want to do is, um,
Okay, we'll try that. So what this is doing is this is settling the player if their oilers are um, off. So we go there, and then it returns, but it returns a little bit too quickly. So we can get rid. Uh, we can change that by basically changing the multiplier. Oh, that'll be even worse. Okay. Uh, Okay, and still a little too quickly. A little better. Let's incorporate the rate that we're working at. So when the scene updates, it has a rate. We'll pass that in there. by rate because if the rate is smaller then we want to retain more of it and uh, division by zero okay Quick fix. Where did you go? There we go. Ugh. That's not right. Okay, let's just ignore that for now. probably fine <laughs> it's probably fine as it is yeah that's fine not worth worrying about for the moment but we do want the player to roll a little bit more so we'll go A little bit janky, but um, it basically works. Okay, why not? Okay, so that's all happening, but what we also want to do is we want to do the shooting thing. So we'll say um, So just a really simple uh, code. So we hit space, bang, ready, 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 ready. I don't know, maybe we wanna give it a bit more. That's kind of how fast we can shoot. Bang, 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 bang. Mm. I don't know. Still pretty good. We'll adjust that a little bit more when we are actually dealing with bullets. Okay. So that's fine. The last thing we need to do for now is the drop. Okay, so when we create the component, we actually want them to drop on screen. So we'll create them at a height above the camera. 
when they are created. Their state is falling onto screen. Then we'll just change the update. So we'll say um, so if the state is stable, then we'll do all of this stuff. Okay, so I'm going to need a new variable to track time as this thing um, falls. So I'll just make that here. I'll say um, set that up uh, fall time. That will be used to animate that. So I'll say. Um, I want this to stabilize to, where were we? I think we wanted it to stabilize to one. So we'll say um, one is a stable amount, plus we'll have this, um, uh, decaying thing. So this is, this is just a formula that I worked out ahead of time. Um, the point is, it's just any sort of formula that um, decays down to zero, because that's what we want. So we'll go um, self dot full time. Yep, yep, yep. So let me change this. So this will decay to 0 0.99. So we want the player to kind of fall a little bit below one. And then if they catch below one, then we catch them and say, there we are, they're stable. Let's see how this works. <laughs> That's underwhelming. Hmm. Let's try this. Let's try. Let's try this. Let's try. What does that look like? Oh yeah, it kind of works. Um, let's make it more extreme. That's cool. Okay. And then um, you know, other enemies will be falling down. We can shoot them and stuff. Cool. Okay, so I'm happy with that for now. We've got some other stuff done. Okay, so now we have bullets, enemies, power-ups and things. Um, I'm going to go to the renderer, um, the graphics engine, and just add a few colors that we might need. I'm going to have a red color and a green color.
Right, so if we look here at the red color, it's mostly red. We've doled down the other colors. And we'll pretty much do the same thing for green. We'll just dial up the green and dial down the other components a little bit. So I'm going to make the bullets red and the power-ups green. Awesome. Okay, so now to draw the bullets and update the bullets. So we can actually pretty much do that straight away. We'll say, um, we'll do those both at the same time. Draw the bullets. Load this up. I think I'm doing basic sphere. Use that. And I can actually um, reuse that same uh, mesh for both the bullets and the power ups. I'll just change the color each time. Okay. So now I'll just render that. So I'll go to the render pass and I'm going to do all of this at the same time. Okay, so probably scale things, that's fine. We won't need any rotation because, well, spheres are symmetric. And, yep, yeah, same thing there. But we will use the position. Then we'll use that again for the power-up. So it'll be pretty much the same. The only thing we'll change is the color. But yep, otherwise that is good. So let's set this up so that we're seeing things. So actually I'm gonna shift this over. I think I made this an app function, but it might make a little more sense. Uh, sorry, not an app function. Might make a little more sense to... So let's start the bullet <clears throat> just ahead of the player. Um, at the player's Y and 
um, at a height of one, I believe. And the velocity is going forwards, so forwards in the x-axis. Okay, let's try that. Uh, and also, we'll up update the bullets. Ooh, <laughs> sentient component has no attribute shoot. Of course, of course it doesn't, because we got rid of that. So that was called from um, 179, handle keys, fair enough. Okay, we drop down. Of course, what am I? I mean, in principle, this is correct, but we shouldn't be going X. We should be going uh, position zero. So this is very fun. Um, <laughs> no, it's going fine. It's going fine. I think we should just create the bullet a little bit further ahead of the player because when we update things we're going to have the player um, checking against its potentially against its own bullets so let's just set it a little bit oops yeah and let's speed it up a little bit too I think it could still go a little f further away from the um, from the player. That's better. So it's never going to be hitting the player. We can shoot. Sorry guys, I'm having too much fun with that. Okay, so what do we have? Bullets are done. Cool. Right, let's work on the enemies now. Um, to start with, I guess, well, let's just work out, let's throw enemies all over the screen and work out which regions look best. Now I think before we were, um, we found that negative six to six was a good range. So, um, let's go with this. Let's go position is, um, yep, that's fine. Okay, so we've made a bunch of enemies. We're just gonna kind of, kind of cover the um, screen and see what looks good. Now for the enemy models, we have um, this UFO base and UFO top, and they should pretty much work out of the box.
Okay, we have that. Then we can go ahead and render the UFOs, the enemies. Let's make the UFO base purple and the UFO top pink. Okay, we'll see what that looks like. Of course, what am I thinking? We need to use that there. Okay. So I believe we need to update the enemies so that, so that they fall down. So we'll go to the update. We'll say See if that works. Let me try this then. Let's let's try bake some values here. So we'll say create an enemy at a distance of twelve at a y of zero. Okay. Indeed that is working. That's good. But the enemy, something looks a little bit off. So we'll go back to the transformations and see what we've got. I think we need to rotate around the X axis a little bit. It looks upside down. I guess because we're doing spheres and things, rotating around the Z axis, because they're symmetric around the Z axis, wouldn't make a difference. Let's try this around the X axis. <laughs> for the enemies, not the player. Jeez, what's going on there? Okay. It's a little better, I guess. Okay, perfect. So we can see here that 12 is a little too close. really not sure why that wasn't working before so let's try this we'll say okay 12 well, I'll still go with this for now 12 to 48 Because I also want to know um, how things should be spaced around. So clearly that's too much. Mm. Enemies are too close together. So let's try stepping in twos. Maybe that's okay, but we should change the scale. So for the enemies, I'm going to go a slightly smaller scale. Yeah, it's a little better. <laughs> okay, so... Um, now for the ranges. Okay. 
a good start. That's a good start. So we're going to be spawning, you know, somewhere between 18 and 36 and somewhere between 6 and negative 6. Okay, so yep, so we're spawning and drawing them. That's good. Now I need to update the enemies. Ah, we're not spawning them, are we? We did like a test, but um, let's let's do this. Okay, so update. Um, we'll go. Okay, so we have that. Um, I also want to just make sure that we're not creating too many of these. So we'll go also check the number of enemies that we have. Let's say 12 is too much. Okay. Let's try that, I guess. Okay. We have some enemies. Um, seems like we should be <laughs> spawning a lot less of those. What am I doing? Ah, uh, guys, that's that's horrible. I was tweaking the wrong parameter. Okay, now let's see. As expected, nothing. Okay, let's tweak it the other way. about right I think maybe just double that a little bit and yeah okay that's fine so let's say 0 0.02 is our spawn rate now I guess we want our shoot rate to be oh, about that I think and we want our power up rate to be about half that okay fine So now we need to update the enemies and I'll do that by, what do we have? Okay. And the reason I'm doing this is I want to be able to reach in and um, set the velocity when I create these so that these enemies go kind of side to side. Okay, so we have a bit of an issue because now the player's movement and the 
enemy movement is going to have different behavior. When we update the player, we have this bit here where we set our velocity to zero. We don't want to do that with the enemy. We want to just keep them going at their velocity. So uh, many ways to fix this. One way is to also realize that we could have done this a little bit better, but that's fine. So what are we doing? Well, the falling doesn't actually use velocity. Nothing else uses velocity. So I guess what we can do is we can take this bit out specifically and use this. We'll go to self, play a velocity, set that by hand, and then we'll do this thing here. So we'll say, um, So there are some little bits of custom code that um, we've added here. This is just uh, boundary checking, basically. Mm. And I should also, what are we doing here? So we are kind of bounding this, so we'll go less than or equal to. See if that works. Huh. Okay, that's not great. <laughs> so what is happening? I guess we could set the velocity to something smaller. Oh yeah, this isn't great either. Position plus equals velocity. Hmm. So we can definitely set this a little better. So we should, it should be velocity times rate. And then when we, well, let's, let's leave it like that and see where, how that looks. Okay, that's good. And our movement is pretty good okay as well. Yep, bang, bang. Bang, bang, bang. Good. <laughs> A little bit weird, but that's okay. We're just having fun. Um, right. So then there's another thing and that's the, we're gonna handle some shooting. So we have, do this test here. Okay, so we've done movement, now we'll go. Okay, so we have this player shoot function. We'll go um, pass in the enemy object and um, then we'll shoot. Yikes, it's not looking good for our uh our dude, it's also not looking good for our frame rate. And the reason for that is probably those print statements. Plus I noticed that a bullet came before the um, UFO had fallen down. So we should check for that too. Uh, 
it's going better, but it's still too many bullets. So, uh, oh yeah, another thing is, are we checking? Yeah, we're not, are we? So, we're checking if the player's bullet goes away, but we're not checking our um, enemy bullets. Other thing is I'm going to make the enemies shoot a little more. Oh. <laughs> the enemies, not the player, shoot a little more slowly. Good. That's cool. That's fun. Right, and the frame rate isn't tanking, because what we had before was we had a whole um, list of bullets that wasn't getting cleared. That's, that's why it was just going down to zero. Okay. Um, I'm happy with that for now. Okay. Now I just need to do collision checks. Okay, so what do we do? First of all, we'll check for um, bullets colliding against the player. So we'll say... Um, Okay, so it's a very elegant test that I'm doing here. Just a simple um, two-dimensional bounding box. Okay, good. Um, now also it's really important, once we've got an enemy and hit the enemy, we should break. So um, each bullet um, just hits one um, enemy. And then we should have just a check so that the bullet gets destroyed when it hits an enemy. Um, we'll go Okay, I think that's all right. We'll find out if it's not. Okay, so the enemy. Okay. Ah, uh, of course. So, the enemies are shooting, but the bullets are immediately hitting the other enemies, it would seem. Perhaps we want that behavior. <laughs> That'd be funny. Okay, so, I think we also want this. We want enemy position... Minus two, see how that goes. So now it'll probably just be the front row of enemies that are shooting me. Yep, that works. And just for fun, the enemies can also kind of shoot themselves by accident or shoot other UFOs. 
Okay. You know, I'm happy with that. That reduces the difficulty a little bit. So now I want to create in the Sentinel component. Okay. We'll go. Okay, so if we have no health, then we'll fall off the screen. Okay, so again, we have this kind of exponential like, power decay thing. And I'm just going to reset that. Okay, I mean, let's just go for it. Huh. It's not working. Ah, because this part is making them stable again. Let's not do that. There we go. Okay, they fall down. Yep. And if we keep doing this. Come on. Anyway, eventually, same thing will happen to, um... To me, I guess. Let me just retry that. There we go. Perfect. Okay. I just want them to drop a little further down. Or actually it doesn't matter too much. So um, last bit here for now is I guess Okay, for enemy and enemies. Yeah, less than zero. So um, if the enemies fall below the ground, they get destroyed. And I will give the player a little bit more health, maybe not as much as before, but that is okay. Nah, that it doesn't look right. I need to drop down more because they just instantly disappear. It doesn't look fun.
that's okay. Um, just make the, the player move a little faster. Because the update already includes the rate, so I'm kind of including the rate twice. Jeez, what's gone? What's gone wrong? Yeah, so that'll be it for now. Uh, we've got collision checks working. Last thing we need to do is do power-ups and yeah, that should be fine. Okay, I was gonna leave it for the night, take a break like I did the other nights, but um, I think we're so close. I'm just gonna finish this off. All we need to do is do power-ups, okay? Um, so I won't really explain much. What is this? Import, yes. Oy before I type that and I guess it imported it. Okay, so where was I? Um, I'm not gonna say much, I'll just go for it. Yeah, let's create the power-ups on the ground. Okay, so we have our player, power-ups are spawning, enemies are shooting. Whoops. Why do I keep dodging the power-ups? That's life, I guess. And then when we die, resets. I'm not quite sure why the power up stopped coming. Um, 
Well, we are popping it, so maybe we should just increase the um, the rate. Yeah, let's just make it about the same speed. Okay. Anyway, so there we have it. We have our game project finally done. See, that's weird. The power up stopped. Anyway, that might be worth looking into, I guess. Or not, I don't know. But this is, this is fun. This is more fun than I thought it was going to be. Um, we have the, the bare bones. Yep. Anyway. Anyway, so that's the bare bones of our project. Um, there are, of course, a lot of modifications we could make. But for now, we can close the book on that. Hope you had fun. I know I had fun. And yeah, see you in the next one. Bye.